Hey everybody, Thrift Store Hacker back again, and as you can see I got a little project going on right here. Uh, we're going to be doing some electroplating, uh, copper electroplating onto steel or different metal surfaces. Um, I wanted to post this video because I found that you can do this without using powerful chemicals, and you can do it with just stuff you got lying around the house. So, what we're going to do today is we're going to dip a nickel and turn it into copper. You can see you just have a regular five cent piece here. And I've already done a few test runs on different bits of steel. As you can see, I kind of copper coated these with uh, varying results. Uh, I tried to do a tool piece, but the, it doesn't really want to stick to the chrome. But the way you set this up is you get yourself a jar, get yourself some baking soda. And I put about half an inch of baking soda into the bottom of the jar and then fill it up with water. And the baking soda is going to act as an electrolyte, help carry the electrical current back and forth a lot better. Uh, my power source is a four and a half volt, uh, you know, or five volt USB uh, like cell phone charger. This is like one of those emergency ones that you put batteries in and you can plug your phone in and it'll charge it up a bit. And then I just used a, an old printer cable. I bet you guys, uh, if you have any old printers lying around, you probably have a dozen of these. And uh, I just cut it short and pulled the uh, positive and negative off of that so we can get the power out of the USB port there. Uh, you can use like a lantern battery or something like that. You know, six volts and under is uh, generally yields a better result. Because if you try to use a 12 volt battery, you can run the risk of just, you know, the copper being electroplated and burning onto the surface and then... It doesn't really look that good. So, as you can see, I have two pieces of copper in here with the electrolyte and the water. And this has been sitting running for about the last 30 to 40 minutes. As you can see, it's got a really nice blue color now. And occasionally I just come by and stir this. And all you're doing is you're introducing an electrical charge into the copper and it's stripping the copper off into this solution. That's why it's blue. You know, copper rusts it turns blue or oxidizes so as this is happening uh, you're generating a little bit of uh, I believe hydrogen gas so uh, you don't want to do this in an enclosed area or you know at least have some fans on uh, we're not doing it on such a large scale that it could be a problem but I do have a little ventilation going down here so now that we've made the solution which all that takes is two copper plates sitting in the solution, or two pieces of copper. As you can see, I had a balled up piece of wire here, and then this copper plate I think I found off of a computer heat sink or something. And you run that for about 45 minutes until it turns a nice blue, uh, continuously agitating the, uh, the baking soda that's down there. Just kind of mix it back and forth every couple of minutes, and that'll help it uh, strip that copper off into the solution here. And now, since I've already had this run, we'll shut this off for right now. And we're going to pull the negative electrode out, which I have the negative lead going to this one right here. And we're gonna just going to set that aside. And then, as you can see, I've done a couple of copper plating projects with this already. So I know this particular metal does take a, uh, a copper plate. But I'm going to put another one of these uh, alligator clips on here to show you. And then we also have the nickel on the end. And I just made a little hanger here to hang it out of the jar. As you can hear, I probably got a text message or something. I'm not cutting the tape. I'm going to keep going. So we just hook this up like this. put it a uh, good distance away. If you put it really close, it will uh, plate that side a lot faster. So I usually tend to set it on uh, towards the outside of the jar so it gets a more uniform uh, electroplate on it. And then we'll turn it on. And it'll take a second for it to start going. Let me pull you off the camera mount here and I'll get you a closer shot. You see it's in there, we got some bubbles forming, you see the bubbles coming off of it. And all that copper that's in the solution there is gathering to this uh, negative charge, 
and it's going to collect on this metal. And this will make a nice copper finish. It's not exactly a really durable one because it's very, very thin copper finish. I guess you can run it for uh, you know a significant amount of time. We're going to run this one for about five minutes. And it'll put a nice copper coat on it. Um, as you can see with that other set of alligator clips there, we've had uh, a few runs in there with the that particular set of alligator clips, so it's starting to get a nice copper finish on it after, you know, this is probably about the, the fifth time I've run it with that particular clip in there. Uh, I tried to do one of my little washers here, but uh, the zinc coating, I think, I think they zinc coat these. I uh, did not want to take that copper too well. But it did kind of give it a neat look. Uh, I usually take my little end on the uh, Dremel here and scuff them up before I put them in, just to make sure it'll it'll take a nice uh, take a nice plate. But it kind of gave it a nice multicolored look, I guess. Uh, the ones that worked really good because these are basically pure steel. These are uh, suspicion uh, suspension bushings out of a car. So they sit in there and they have a bolt that goes through them, but. They're made of a really good quality steel, and as you can see, I just buffed it with the uh, Dremel. There's probably, you know, you probably use sandpaper or something nicer. Uh, you just want to make sure you clean all the impurities off, because if you don't, you get little stuff like that on it. And you clean the impurities off, and it comes out pretty good. That's the first one I did, and the second one I did, I cleaned up a little bit better, and it came out a little bit better. Now let's see how this is doing. We're still bubbling along here. It looks like it's uh, moving along. It does take probably about five to ten minutes to get a like a really good copper coat on that. So we're just gonna let it sit, let it do its thing. Maybe we'll scoot it a little bit closer to the uh, to the plate there. Make sure all my electrical connections are nice and good. But as you can tell, since I'm running this on four AAA batteries that like have a uh, reducer in here, so it's probably only coming about like this is a total of six. It's probably only coming five out this way. Um, the batteries don't last too long. I mean, I, I've run the the system on the whole uh, well to charge up the uh, the jar. I ran that, but you know, it's kind of. After you get in there, it's kind of killing time until it comes out. Let's turn it off really quick and see if we have any results already. I don't know if you can see that too well, but you can already see there's a little bit of copper forming on there. Let's drop that back in. Just kind of let it roll for a little while. Maybe turn it around a little bit and see if we can get a little more copper coating on one side. Oop. I'm turn that back on. Well, you can definitely see the uh, pull you off the camera mount here again. You can definitely see there's bubbles coming off of that nickel down there. Um, I don't know uh, if like a nickel for our international viewers, a uh, nickel is a five cent piece. Show that to you. I've noticed that I have a I, I have a good amount of uh, international viewers, and I welcome you guys, and I hope you learned something. Um, if you post in your own language at the bottom of the YouTube comments, it's kind of spotty if I can give you a response or not. It just depends on. Uh, how well Google Translate works. So if I if I send you a response that wasn't exactly what you were intending to get back, uh, sorry, it's a translation error. But uh, we could still have fun and do science. But really, the only things you need around the house to do this is a little bit of copper wire, which I've saved up this bit from a previous project. A one dollar box of baking soda, which you're only going to use about it. You know, maybe a, a quarter of the box for something like this. Probably about an eighth of the box for that. And uh, a battery source. So, you know, you can generally find most of this stuff in a junk pile. 
Now, copper plating has been around for hundreds of years. Uh, I know uh, it was the show Mythbusters did a thing on the Baghdad battery, which was like one of the first known batteries in you know hundreds of years ago, and they really think it was used for jewelry production and doing something kind of like this with uh, electroplating and uh, you know making fancy things with uh, copper and whatever soft metals that they can find around them. Uh, I don't. They, you know, I, this works great for copper. I don't think it's going to work for any other metals. The metal plate, but uh, as I go through here, I'm going to find the different metals that we can copper plate to, and I'll probably formulate a list and then make a big instructable about it. Um, a lot of other people have covered this on the internet, but I decided, yeah, I'll give it a shot. It looked like fun, and if it's really easy to do, everybody can do it. Let's see where we're at with this nickel here. I'm looking down in there. It's got a bit of a copper coat on it, but uh, we're just going to let it run for a little bit longer. Uh, I want to get a really good result out of it. As you can see, as the process is going on, uh, your positive plate is going to completely uh, oxidize up because basically you're taking you're, you're going to strip a lot of copper off this plate even though there's a lot of copper in solution you're going to strip a lot off of that plate just in this process it's going to oxidize with the electrical current going through it and after a while it'll get smaller and smaller I've just been every time I use it I've just been taking it out and once again hitting it with the uh little sandy bit on my Dremel and uh, putting it back in. It seems to work every time. Uh, I've noticed, too, if you want a nice copper coat on this, if you can get the solution nice and blue and then let all of your uh, excess baking soda settle, you can get a better uh, copper plate on it when, the, uh, when you're not agitating the uh, baking soda. It does take a lot longer because the baking soda is sitting at the bottom. There's less of an electrical. Uh, it's not as conductive without the uh, baking soda stirred up into the solution. But you do get a kind of a finer finish on it. All right, let's pop this out one more time and see how we're looking. Oh, here we go. You can see we got a bit of a copper finish on this. Very thin copper finish. Looks really nice, though. And then let's take a look at the nickel. Here's a regular nickel. Here's our plated one. And since these already have a really nice finish on them, uh, it takes that copper really well and makes it look really nice. But there you have it. That's how you can uh, copper plate uh, some different, uh, you know, different types of metal at home. Uh, I'll try to fabricate a list on uh, what kind of metals you can use. Uh, the nickel worked pretty good. Um, this cheap steel here with the alligator clip worked fairly good as well. Um, multiple dippings, it'll look like that, and that's got a really nice copper finish on it. I can probably clean that up with a little bit of vinegar, and that'd look great. But there you go. Um, I encourage you guys to try this. Um, really easy. You probably use it for a science experiment or something like that. Uh, you know, use it to cheat at your school science fair. But uh, until next time, like my videos, subscribe if you like my videos, and build stuff and have fun. Have a good afternoon, everyone.